Sorry, I didn't realize in the previous video that we ran out of memory on my memory card, so I was cut off right there. So let me talk about this one here. I put a picture like this, and this is really VDS versus ICD, if you're looking at it. And it will look something like this, VGS equals plus 15, plus 10, plus 5, there'll be some numbers here. When you're on this side of the graph, that's called the ohmic region. When you're on this side, that's known as the saturation region. If you're on this end, you're in the off position. There's no current going through, it's zero current. So now, and if the voltage is less than VT, even if down here, actually my picture, that shouldn't be a zero, that should be VT here, threshold voltage, you know. If you lessen the, fresh, the threshold voltage, you're actually in the off position. So on the ohmic pos position like this, you're in like a linear circuit, and your MOSFET will behave just like a resistor. And what's the value of that resistor? Well, the value of that resistor is going to equal to the slope of that. As I said, I did the whole thing not knowing the camera's off. So Ohm's law says R equals V divided by I. When we say R, we're talking about R between D and S. So if you take these two points, there's one point here, that's this one. And there's the other point, that's 0, 0. And this is 10 milliamp, and that's 4 volts. So the change in the voltage from here to there, that's 4 volts. Ohm's law says V on the top, that's the voltage on the top. The change in current from 0 to 10, that's 10 milliamp. So when you're in this section here, that MOSFET is treated as a resistor of 400 ohms. So when you look at your circuit, it will look like this if you are in the ohmic region. And you can say VDS equals to 4.3 volts. But if you're in the saturation mode, then that MOSFET is not going to behave as a linear circuit. Notice it looks like a flat, it looks like a con constant value, which means it's going to react like a current source, and it depends on which one of these values we're operating on. I have to look at my circuit, look at the load line. If my load line looks like this, it might be this number, it might be that number. It depends on what we have for VGS. So to the right of this 4 volts, or to the right of this line here, this will look like a current source. To the left of that, it looks like a resistor. So we need to know which mode we are in. Why we need to know that? Here is the reason why. Let me take a sheet of paper, bigger one, and write stuff on it. Maybe what I'll do on this sheet, let me get a ruler here. This is the biggest ruler I've seen. And I'm going to do a PMOS and NMOS and go through them. So let me look at the NMOS on this channel or on this side. And this is the PMOS. Let me just do the N MOS. Now come back to the PMOS. Uh, oh, I forgot to write one more column here. So this section here, we are in linear. I mean, cut off here.
This is the omic section. Sometimes we call that triad region. or linear, different names for it, and this is the saturation. How do we know which mode we are in? Well, that's easy. If VGS is less than or equal to the threshold voltage, we are in the cutoff region, which means I sub D S is equal to zero. If VGS is greater than V threshold, then VD and VDS is less than or equal to VGS minus V threshold, we are in the ohmic region. And if you want to find the current, good luck here. This is mu n, I'll explain that on the next page because this is a nice clean page. COX times W over L times parentheses VGS minus V threshold times VDS minus VDS squared over 2. Yowza. Now, a lot of people don't want to write all that stuff there. So they actually have this is a constant, that's a constant, that's a constant, they factor the one half outside, so they create a new constant. And they call that current K times 2 times VGS minus V threshold times VDS minus VDS squared. And basically what they did, they defined K to be what? It's uh, two times that number, let's see, one half. Mu N C O X W over L. So if you let K equal to that, you end up with this equation, which is a little bit easier to use than that ugly one. And if you are in saturation mode, you know that because VGS is bigger than V threshold, and VDS is bigger than VGS minus V threshold, and I sub DS will equal to one half mu n C O X W over L. You'll find actually all these on the data sheet, all this information. VGS minus V threshold squared. And if you want to use K in place of that, K is equal to all of this, you can make it K times what? VGS minus V threshold squared. Again, what is K equal to? Is all this constant right there. So instead of looking at the data sheet trying to find out what mu n 
COX, WL, and to get what K is, most of these problems, people will give you what the value of K in it, so you don't have to look at the data sheet. Now, if you have a PMOS, a little bit reverse there. You want to make sure your VGS here is greater than V threshold. And again, I said SD here, not DS, will be zero. Because when you're in the PMOS, the D and the S are backward. So if you want to, a lot of times, actually, we write that instead of this OR, Instead of VGS, we go VSG instead of GS is less than or equal to the absolute value of V threshold. That's the same thing. When you're in this mode, it will say VSG greater than the absolute value of V threshold or you can say VGS is less than V threshold. And you want VSD, not DS, I'll convert that to DS in a minute, to be less than or equal to VSG minus the absolute value of V threshold, which you can write that VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold. So this or the one below it, or that one. You can use either one. And here, ISD will equal to mu n or mu zero, depends which book you graph there. COX, sometimes I use mu zero, sometimes mu n when I do these problems. W over L. VSG minus the absolute value of V threshold times VSD minus VSD squared over two. Again, this is really K here. And if you're in this mode here, which means VSG greater than absolute value of V feminine or VGS is less than uh, V threshold, not feminine. I keep saying feminine. And VSD greater than VSG minus the V threshold absolute value or VDS is less than or equal to VGS minus V7. And I sub SD is equal to one half mu n mu zero, whatever you want to call it, COX W over L VSG minus absolute value V threshold squared. Whew. I'll be using these equations. I'll use K. You'll see in the math in a few minutes. Next video. So quickly in case you're wondering what is mu n, what's COX, what's W, what's L, I'll give you all the explanation to them. So what are they? VGS, that's gate to source voltage. which will equal to VG minus VS. VDS, drain to source voltage. Which is 
VD minus VS. VTH, I mentioned that threshold voltage. I sub D, drain current. What else on that equation was? Mu N or mu zero. Electron mobility, that's a constant. COX, capacitance of gate oxide. Again, going back to that picture, where's that picture? When I start talking about them, I said by putting a positive value and negative value, you create a capacitance right here. What's the value of that capacitance? What is C equal to? Plus, minus, an insulator between them. So that's what COX. And again, it depends on the make of this one. You and I, there's no way of knowing that. The data sheet will have the information on it. So that's what these are. So we're not gonna make you go to the data sheet all the time. We're actually gonna give you a value for K and ask you to do the problem. So I'm gonna stop this video here and make another one with just examples in it.